Alright YouTubers, uh, hopefully this video will go as quickly as I can. Um, it will be a little bit lengthy though because I uh, do a lot of explaining and it's geared more for to the, uh, the beginners. And so those people that are already experienced, um, I don't really know why you're watching this video anyways because uh, you don't really need to know it. Um, but for you beginners that are really wanting to understand what's happening, um, this is perfect. We're going to cover WPA and WPA2 wireless cracking. And um, there are some things that you will need before we do this. I have Backtrack 5. If you have not migrated over to Backtrack 5 yet and you still have Backtrack 4, the commands will still be the same. So that's good. Um, other than that, what we need to check is we need to check to make sure we have a word list or a dictionary or a password list. Uh, you call it whatever you want. But we're going to call it word list. If you're in Backtrack 4, you go to the, uh, the little start menu. Somewhere down here, I think it says like system or it'll say uh, file manager. I don't know. I don't, I don't have Backtrack 4 in front of me right now. But down here somewhere, you're going to be able to get to your um, like a file manager. In Backtrack 5, it's called the Dolphin File Manager. And basically, it's just it's the spot where you can see and browse all your folders. So um, we're going to go to root. We're going to go to pen to test. We're going to go to passwords. And then word lists. And then we have uh, we have our word list here, which already comes with Backtrack. Um, I'm pretty sure all the Backtracks, even going as far back as like Backtrack 2, they all had a word list, if I'm not mistaken. Um, some of them are TXT. This is a .lst file, and that's fine. Um, you can still open it with a, with a, just a text editor. That will still work. Um, but what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to right-click this and then drag it to the desktop, and I'm going to click Copy here. I don't want to move it there, I just want to copy it there. That way I keep the original file in its original location. And if I want to go ahead and now make changes to this file, I can just edit the one that's on my desktop. But whether you decide to do that or not, that's up to you. You just need to remember the location of where this is. So instead of uh, going root, pen test, passwords, word lists, I can just go to root desktop and that's where that is. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, exit out of this and um, if you don't have one of these then you need to download one from the internet and they have a whole bunch that you can download you just google it and the cool thing is is that um, basically I'll go ahead and open it just real quick to show it to you um, go to my utilities and select if you have backtrack 4 you can open it with Kate uh, backtrack 5 which I have comes with Kwrite so I'm gonna open that but you can use Kate if you want And as you can see, um, it contains a bunch of pass phrases, codes, and not not codes, but you know, you know, things that people might use as passwords. And uh, that's why you would use like a dictionary or something. There's these lists that have a ton of names and all that sort of thing, all you know, in here. So that's what that's what you want. And basically, now that we have it copied to the desktop, I can add things in here. Um, I can copy other things and paste them in here so it's pretty cool and you can actually take this make your own file uh, and uh, whatever it, it, it doesn't really matter so okay uh, what I'm gonna go ahead and do now is uh, we're gonna go ahead and open up our console and uh, just like WEP we're gonna start off with airmon ng uh, I have my interface here which is WN0 but your yours may be called something else but we're gonna go ahead and put it into monitor mode airmon ng start and then we're going to go ahead and do WLAN 0. This will go ahead and put it into uh, monitor mode which is what we need and um, this next part is going to be optional if I do airmon and g As you can see there's my mon0. I'm going to go ahead and disable it temporarily so that I can change the MAC address. And I'm going to do it for a specific reason. You'll see in a minute. You don't have to do it though if you don't want to. Um, we're going to do a if config mon0 or whatever your interface is and then down think of it as just temporarily bringing it down uh, mac changer space dash uh, m space and then whatever you want your mac address to be i'm just going to go uh, zeros through fives it needs to be a, a set of six total so zero you know there'll be one two three four five six so zero through five that's six uh, and then you need to specify your interface enter and then uh, it shows you what my MAC address was and it shows you what I faked it as now 
Um, if you get an error, if it's not able to fake it, that's probably because you didn't bring it down. You didn't disable it temporarily. So now I need to do if config mon0 and bring it back up. If we bring it down, we got to pick it back up. And that's what we're doing. Now I'm going to do my arrow dump and mon0 or whatever your interface is. You want to let this thing scan for like 30 seconds, maybe a minute, whatever. And uh, we're going to also keep an eye on the stations that are down here. There are people that uh, will watch WPA and WPA2 crack videos. And they try to do it and uh, they will get frustrated because they are not successful. And um, I'm going to kind of explain a little bit more uh, so that you guys will be a little bit more successful in trying to do what you're doing. So um, I let it scan for 40 seconds. I'm going to go ahead and stop it. And uh, the one that I'm going to try is the 2Wire024. Um, and it is a WPA2, and I'm doing WPA2 just to show you uh, the same method that I'm using for the WPA will work with WPA2. So if that answers any questions out there. Um, we're going to talk about the stations, but I'm going to specify all this information first uh, for my arrow dump. Arrow dump dash ng dash c. It's on channel one dash w. We're going to go ahead and write the file name that we want to store all the data that it collects, all that information, and we'll call it WPA crack one zero or whatever. I don't know. I have other files, so I uh, I don't want to get confused with the which one it is. So I'll name it just WPA crack ten, um, and then I'm going to specify the BSS ID. Um, sometimes you will watch other videos, and uh, they will not specify the BSS ID, and I you know that's fine, but there's a reason why I do. Um, basically, if we just specified the channel and the file name, and we uh, we let it go. It will start collecting all the data, but as you can see, we have another router that's on channel one. We have another one that's on channel one, and that's information that I don't need it to be collecting. All I care about is the one that we want to connect to. Okay, so I think that that makes pretty good sense. And uh, the last thing I'm going to do is specify that I only want to capture IVs. That's what's necessary to crack WEP. And in this case, we're going to use it also uh, for this video. So uh, the last thing is mon0 or whatever your interface is, enter. And we're going to hopefully see a station pop up here. Uh, if there's no stations that appear, then that means that we're not going to be able to do this attack. So I'm going to sit here for a little bit and hopefully we will have one that, uh, that comes up. And then there we have it. It took a little time, so uh, that's why I always say, you know, wait 30 seconds to a minute. Um, it didn't display right away. So now that we have this, this is perfect. And this is what a lot of people are missing. Well, now, that, now there's another one, um, which is crazy. But anyways, um, I know the two wires are two four. That is my router. Okay. Um, the reason that um, I faked my Mac is because I would be able to easily tell which one was me and which one was somebody else. Um, my network manager is right here and as you can see I'm not connected so it's not showing me here. A lot of people make these YouTube videos or whatever, these tutorials and um, they basically will try to de-authenticate themselves and that's really easy to do and I like to be, I would like to be just a little bit more realistic than that. So um, basically this is great. If, if you don't have a station this is not going to work. What we're going to do is we're going to deauthenticate. We're going to send a deauthenticate request, uh, deauthentication request. It's going to deauth everything, and then it's going to basically make uh, the station reconnect. So if you can imagine, if you're on the internet and all of a sudden you got disconnected for some reason, and your computer then reconnected, you know, uh, then that's basically what we want to happen, and hopefully we can capture that information. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, open up another console <coughs> and we are going to go ahead and do uh, air replay and uh, dash zero which is a deauth and we're just going to send one. 
there's people that are I've seen people do like a hundred and all this stuff that's just nonsense uh, all it's doing is is it's constantly going to deauthenticate and not give the computer a chance to re you know reauthenticate so anyways here we go we're just going to send one and we're going to do a dash e specify the ESSID which is two wire zero two four and um, be what we're going to look for is um, I keep the arrow dump window open so that up here we can see what's going to be uh, what's going to hopefully be a WPA handshake and that is uh, what I just explained when something uh, basically the station gets deauthenticated or it you know it gets kicked off basically and then it's forced to reauthenticate or authenticate so that's what we're going to hope for and I'm just going to send one okay Oh, I gotta specify my uh, my interface. So mon zero. There we go. And we're gonna wait. All right, give it like ten seconds. You just just be patient. And right there it is. See, we only had to send one. We didn't have to send any more than that. WPA handshake. And then it tells us the BSSID that we want so that's perfect that's everything that we need we only need to do one more thing now and that's pretty much it so it's pretty simple <coughs> okay um, the we're gonna go ahead and run our, our air crack uh, but be, actually before we do that I'm gonna run uh, DIR uh, and as you can see here's my WPA crack 10 and you'll notice that it puts a dash and a zero one now I didn't do that that's something that backtrack does automatically and uh, so just be aware of that anytime that you put a specify a file name it's gonna put a dash and then a zero one and if you do another one with the same exact name it's gonna put a dash zero two so just so you know that um, alright so here we go um, gonna go ahead and do a air crack WPAs uh, we're, we're concerned with the data and right now we're, we're we don't have to wait for 10,000 minimum we don't have to we don't have to worry about that so aircraft dash ng dash uh, w this is the word list okay and the location of our word list which is on the desktop is root desktop and then our word list name which is this dark code dot lst dark code with a zero dot lst I'm gonna put a space and now we need to specify uh, the WPA crack 10-01 and it's case sensitive so for example if your desktop folder was a lowercase d then you would want to put a lowercase d uh, so WPA crack 10-01 dot ivs and that's all we need um, so we've specified uh, the dash w we're special just think of dash w as the word list in this case and also uh, the file that we stored the data in which is wpa crack 10 I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter and hopefully this will start its process which it which it is um, basically uh, I'm gonna stop the video for now because this will uh, this could take quite a while so just be patient with it let it do its scan and uh, I will be right back uh, as soon as it, it hopefully it finds the password so I'll be right back okay all right YouTube um, I've gone ahead and as you can see uh, it was almost well, about 50 minutes so almost an hour it took to find the key which is red light um, so anyways um, that's and anyway, as soon as it's, it's cracked then it will it will stop um, this right here uh, the speed of, of how fast it's going I forgot to tell you that before if you uh, go to your arrow dump which I had left my arrow dump running but basically once you get that handshake right here once you get the handshake you can go ahead and control C and stop that that way when you actually do your air crack it will uh, it will go a little bit faster so Anyways, um, I've, I've done a lot of talking. I've done a lot of explaining. I hope it's covered most of the questions that you guys might have. Um, and as you can see, I did crack a WPA2. Um, and if I go to my network manager, it's 2Wire024. And uh, properties. Uh, 
<clears throat> you're going to select WPA passphrase and as you can see I've typed red light in I'll go ahead and say OK connect look down here and connected at 100 percent go ahead and try to open up my browser and it loads right into Google so anyways thanks guys for watching this movie and um, just send me a question if uh, send me a message if you have a question or something so uh, thanks a lot guys and uh, we'll see you later